rainy, wet. <laughs> I feel like a wet dog when I came in here. But let us uh, let us pray to God right now. Let's uh, let's thank God for for this this day that He has given us. Another beautiful day, even though the rain's falling, even though it's gray outside, and uh, we're not quite adjusted and used to it yet. We still give thanks. We give thanks for this day. We, we give thanks for our heartbeat. We give thanks for the people around us. We give thanks for our work and our passions. We, uh, we just give thanks for life. Um, we pray that, that uh, God, that you would give us the strength to meet the challenges that we face, whether it's a you know, family issue or a loved one or work money. There's a lot of, a lot of things that we face in a week. A lot of ups and downs. And uh, we, just, we just pray right now and we ask you that you give us the strength and the courage and the enthusiasm and the energy to continue living our lives with an open heart. Go out into the world and, and do our part. Live like Jesus. Follow, follow Jesus. Live in your example. We pray all these things in your name.
times I think, what will people say of me when I'm only just a memory? When I'm home where my soul belongs, was I loved when no one else would show up? Was I Jesus to the least of us? Was my worship more than just a song? I want to live like that Give it all I have So that everything I see
basket there with prayer cards, yellow cards, and you can write a prayer request there, a joy or thanksgiving you want to share or a concern, and just put it back in the basket, and I'll pick those up before the prayer time after the sermon and share those. The Suicide Prevention Walk is next Saturday, September 8th, and I'll be there along with uh, Shelly Savory. Shelly, wave your hand, and if you want to sign up for a team, uh, we walk in honor of Team TJ. So you can sign up for that team to work with us and talk to Shelly for more information. We also uh, want to let you know we have village t-shirts for sale today and Shelly has those. So just have a look also at the other announcements that are printed there. Whenever we gather together, we are all the village community and we, every Sunday, remember who we are by reading our village statement. So I invite you to read that now. It's on the screen and printed in your program. We are the village church. When we gather in community, we remember that God is with us. We know that we are imperfect people who make mistakes. We give thanks that God loves us anyway. In this community, we practice patience, compassion, and forgiveness. When we leave this gathering, we go out to share God's healing love with the broken world. We are Jesus' instruments of hope in our world. We are followers of Jesus, and we can change the world. Our scripture for today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 7. Uh, when Jesus gets into a little conversation with the scribes and the Pharisees about what's really important uh, in the law, in the practices, and what comes from the heart. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. When he left the crowd, he entered the house. His disciples asked him about the parable, and he said, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile? Since it enters not the heart, but the stomach, and goes out into the sewer. Thus he declared all the foods clean. And he said, it is what comes out of a person that defiles. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Jealous for me, love's like a hurricane. I am a tree, 
bending beneath the weight of God's wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions and curves by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how God loves us so. Oh, how God loves us. How God loves us so. God is jealous for me. Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree. Bending beneath the weight of God's wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions, cliffs by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how God loves us so Oh, how God loves us How God loves us so to the face with something, our um, habits come back, those old habits we want to break and we forget how much you love us, we forget that we're the good people you created and so we come back here again. 
we thank you, God, that you never give up on us. So God, we ask you to speak to us, speak to us, remind us, remind us that we're your beloved children. We are listening. Amen. Well, you might have mentioned, uh, you might have noticed that there's a presidential campaign going on. Anybody notice that? No. Maybe a congressional race or two, a senatorial race going on. Have you seen any campaign ads on television, anybody? Seen any, seen any interviews on the news? Seen any uh, candidates being interviewed? <clears throat> There's a kind of a, a technique that goes on with really good, uh, experienced, seasoned uh, candidates. It goes something like this. The interview asks you a question, and then you answer saying whatever you want to say. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Have you noticed that? They're really good at doing what we call staying on message. So, you know, Katie Curry, Tom Brokaw, whoever it is, they ask you a question, and then you just turn it around to back over, back, back around to whatever it is you want to say. Because that's what a really excellent seasoned candidate does. They stay on message. They, they, they listen to the question. The good ones listen to the message, and they try to connect their answer to the message in some way, but they always get back to their point. They have certain points they want to make about what their message is to their people. It's what their campaign manager has told them, their PR people, their um, people who've done their polling have said, this is what will sell your message. So they go back and stay on message. Jesus was actually a master at turning the conversation back to his message. Can you believe I'm going to compare Jesus to a really good campaigner? Jesus was the best communicator ever. He was. And he knew just how to take a conversation with somebody and, and stay on point with his message. Think about it. Am I right? You see, the scribes and the Pharisees in our story for today, they were, they were trying to catch him up. They were always trying to catch him. They weren't, they weren't very smart. They weren't anything like the most skilled uh, interviewers that we have in television today. They, they were trying to get him caught up in a debate about hand-washing of all things. A hand-washing ritual, right? Their criticism honestly doesn't even mean that much because even though the, the scripture there says that all the Jews maintain these hand-washing rituals, we know from other historical facts that a lot of the Jews didn't even maintain these hand-washing rituals. And while Jesus doesn't reject the laws, he indicates that there are more important things to worry about, right, than these rituals about hand washing and then later about food. This is what he says. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You abandon the commandments of God and hold to human tradition. You see, being an experienced speaker, he just, he just turns the conversation right around from what they're talking about and gets right to the heart of the matter. Who cares about hand washing in the grand scheme of things? Seriously. Do you think the people in the crowd really wanted to hear Jesus debate with them about hand washing? Do you think? Who cares about food laws and what goes into your stomach? Do you think that was, was what people were pinning their hopes on those days? It's not what goes into the body, Jesus said, it was what comes out of your heart that is important. You see, for the ancients, the heart was the center of both rationality and decision making. The heart was the center of decision making. The heart is everything. So that's where Jesus puts the focus in the conversation on the heart. Jesus wants to focus on the big sins, and he lists them right there. I got a translation out of the Message Bible. Did you read the scripture I read? Some of those words I needed to look up in the dictionary. Did you, did you know all those words? I, I'm going to have Teresa put the list up here. It's from the Message, and it's a little more contemporary language. Here it is. Here's the list of sins. Obscenities, lusts, thefts, murders, adulteries, greed, depravity, deceptive dealings, carousing, mean looks, Slander, arrogance, foolishness. That's a pretty serious list, don't you think? I 
think we can all find ourselves there. If you don't find yourself there, go ahead and just take a nap. Okay? <laughs> Jesus says these evil traits and actions come within. He says these come from within our hearts. Wow. Our hearts. That's harsh. My pride and arrogance, my desire for money and wealth, my propensity to be every now and then deceptive in my dealings with other people, those times when we might fall into a temptation to cheat on our partners, the times when we make foolish choices, the times when we might just take something that's not ours for the taking, those actions are rooted in the heart that God gave us? How can that be? How could things go so, so horribly wrong? How could creation go so horribly wrong? Because let's think about this. We all started out as children, right? Innocent and good. Think about every baby you've ever held, right? Babies start out innocent and good. We're born as beloved children of God. We are given to this world as a blessing. We claim children here as a blessing. We baptize them. But then life happens, right? Life happens. We've all been hurt, and I know that. I'm not naive. I know what percentage of our population has been abused as children. I know that none of us grew up with perfect parents, right? I know we didn't all grow up in homes with complete compassion and perfect patience. My children aren't growing up in a home like that. Our parents all did the best with the resources they had. We hope they did. Some of us had it better than others. And now we're here, every one of us, a little bit battered and broken, some more than others, doing the best we can. We are all sinners in some way. Look at the list up there. But Jesus says, we can all choose good over evil. We all have good in our hearts. It was put there by God in our birth, in our creation. We can all choose good over evil. There's evil there. I don't know how it got there. That's, that's another sermon for another day. But there is brokenness in the world. We all have some amount of bent toward evil. But God gives us the power. God gives us the power to choose good. Every one of us has the power to choose good. Jesus told those scribes and Pharisees, it's not so important about the ritual hand washing. They were all concerned about that. And their rules about what to eat weren't so important. He said, you know, we can only focus on so much. So let's stay on message. What's in your heart, he said. What's in your heart? And what do your actions reveal about your heart? Do you have a good heart? Or is your heart overcome with evil? It's one or the other. You can't choose good and evil. It's as simple as that. Now, I know some choices seem a little more complicated, but usually we can tell which one it is. Is it good or an evil? <laughs> now, in my neighborhood, we drive past this corner as we're entering the neighborhood just a few blocks from our house. And on this same corner, almost every time we enter the neighborhood, there are some young men hanging out. Sometimes some girls, but mostly young men. One day, Kurt was driving into the neighborhood, and he literally saw somebody passing out white t-shirts to these young men. They're usually wearing red. Yeah, we're pretty sure they're gang colors. But at the beginning of the summer, for some reason, somebody in charge of the gang decided they were going to wear white t-shirts instead of red. We don't know why. Uh, 
maybe they were trying to hide from the gang task force, but if we're smart enough to figure out they switched from red to white, we're pretty sure the gang task force can figure this out. Every day for 13 years, we drive into the neighborhood past the same corner and we see these guys hanging out there. We're pretty sure we know what's going on, right? Shootings have happened near that corner many times in our 13 years. Prayer vigils have happened near that corner. Nothing really changes. Now I know something about the deep cycles of poverty and oppression. The evil is much bigger than them. On the one hand, intellectually, I can actually understand the connection between these young men and slavery. I understand that their oppression and their behavior is actually rooted in slave trade. I understand that there is a connection between these young men and their situation and the failure of our public education system. You know the connection, don't you? I understand that there is a connection between what I see on that corner driving into my neighborhood every day for the past 13 years and our economic crisis and the lack of jobs in Toledo. I get that connection. On the other hand, if I had the guts, one of these days I would stop my car and I would get out of my car and I would talk to them and I would say, you know what? God loves you. You are a beloved child of God and you can make another choice. I wish I could do something more to change the situation for these young men that I see on the corner every day. I can't fix everyone. In reality, I can't fix anyone. But I can do this. I can ask God to fix me. I can ask God to fix me. And you can do the same thing. I have evil in my heart. I have brokenness in my heart. I don't like it. I hate it when I lust after the success of other people and wish it was mine. I hate it when I wish I had more money, even though I say I would do good things with that money. So I think that's okay. It's still greed. My sin eats away at me just like the sin of somebody who has taken the life of somebody else. No sin is any better or worse than any other sin. Sin eats away at us. Sin separates us from the goodness of God and the love of God. It separates us from the goodness that God wants us to experience. I have my sin and you have yours too. Look at the list. No sin is any better or worse than any other. But God gives us the power to let go of evil in our hearts and make way for the good. That's how this works. We let go of the evil and that makes room. It makes room for the good. Our hearts are so full of the good that there's no room left for the evil. And God always wants it to forgive us. God wants us to live as forgiven people with hearts full of goodness. Look at the list and then pray with me. Let's pray together. God, we know we're not perfect people. And so silently now we confess our sins and our brokenness to you.
take away the evil in our hearts. We know that that's what you do, and we're so grateful. We know that you have already forgiven us, and we thank you. Today, help our hearts to be filled with your love for us. Help us to remember every day that you love us, so that we can choose good and not evil. Help us to be like Jesus and stay, stay focused so that good comes out of our hearts. Help us to live with good actions, with actions of love. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Celebrate Holy Communion, and I offer these words of instruction. We celebrate Open Communion here at the village. Everyone is invited to participate in this sacrament, in this sacred meal. After I offer the prayers, we'll invite you to come forward. Jenny and I will be serving up front. We invite you to come forward from this side. We'll give you a piece of bread, which you dip into the cup. Celebrate communion here. We use grape juice for the sacrament. After you uh, dip the uh, bread into the juice, you can go ahead and eat it and return to your seats from this aisle. If you have mobility challenges, please let somebody near you know that, and we'll be happy to come and serve you at your seat. Holy Communion is an ancient ritual. It's a meal by which we are connected with one another and connected with God. It's common, it's right that we ask for forgiveness before we come to this table and we've just done that. It's also right that we give thanks and so when we gather around this table we remember that we are children of God and we give thanks to God for this world and for this creation. We Remember that God has given this world into our care. We give thanks that God's Spirit lives in us and gives us the power to choose good over evil. We give thanks that God sent Jesus into this world so that God's own Son might show us how to live. And we might realize that God knows what it feels like to face the challenges that we face every day. We remember that when Jesus was nearing the end of his life on earth, he gathered together with his friends, and a group of friends much like us, and he took some bread and he blessed it and he broke it, and he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this bread and know that I love you and I am always with you. When you eat this bread, know that my body is in you. Take and eat this bread and be blessed. Also, after that meal, he took a cup and he blessed it and he said, drink from this cup. All of you, this is the cup of salvation. Drink from this cup and know that you are blessed. Let us pray. God, we ask you now to bless these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ as we receive these gifts. Fill our hearts with your goodness and your love. Let us go from this table, new people, ready to live as your servants in the world.